uh, I'm Jian Qing Fang, the I think 34 or 35th uh, student of Peter Bigel. Uh, the main reason there's ambiguity because Momo Xiu graduated the same year. He's a bit older, so therefore he may be 34. I'm 35. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, so it's my uh, Peter, the you know, intellectual house, has uh, inspired and guided many of our research and his kind and uh, caring uh, gentleman that touch many aspects of our lives. So it's my great pleasure. And uh, I let me thank to uh, Harry uh, uh, in advance for, I mean, his anecdote on Peter's influence on his career and therefore by similarity, his influence on all of our uh, career here. So uh, Harry, is the floor is yours. Oh, thank you, Jian Qin. Uh, thank you, Jian Qin, for your uh, kind introduction. Uh, first, I apologize uh, for not being able to make it. Uh, all I wish I could be there. And uh, from the first talk, I saw that it's a lot of fun. Uh, and it's truly, uh, truly a great honor uh, to give this talk. I'm grateful uh, of this opportunity uh, to talk about Peter's influence on my career. And Peter is not my advisor, but I hope and from this talk, you will see that the inspirations I received from Peter could be more than what anyone would wish for from an advisor. I'll focus on uh, three uh, topics, a large uh, covariance matrix estimation, statistical network analysis, and variational inference, or more broadly, statistical and computational guarantee of non complex organization problems. In 2007, I gave a talk at Berkeley, uh, thanks to Ben. And Peter took me out for lunch at the faculty club. I remember I had a stopping problem then. I couldn't finish the food. But that was the best lunch ever. And Peter was so enthusiastically and talking about and his work on large covariance matrix estimation. It was so inspiring. So, okay, uh, that was a joint work with Lisa. Uh, uh, thank you, Lisa, for organizing this. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Peter and Lisa uh, study uh, a covariance matrix estimation and uh, a P by P matrix. So there are an order of uh, P square unknown parameters. It would be very natural uh, to assume we would need a sample size at least an order of polynomial P uh, to get a consistent estimation. But what they proved, that was amazing. For a class of current matrices, the sum of size you need is just more than log p. That sounds, you know, too good to be true. So let's review the, uh, 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 the paper a little bit. So we observe x1 to xn id with a covariance matrix, sigma, p by p, without loss of generality. We assume the mean is equal to zero. So the goal is to estimate the covariance matrix under the spectral norm. Inspired by time series data, let's assume that and the sigma ij decay to zero when sigma ij moves away from the diagonal and decays to zero with a polynomial rate. From that assumption, immediately, we have this very simple fact. If we look at sigma ij and far away from the diagonal, and this k positions away from the diagonal, okay, if you're plugging k over here, then you get k plus one to the power of minus alpha plus one. Then we look at the raw sum of those uh, entries, absolute uh, a value of those entries, 
then we get such a level bound, and the upper bound is k to the power minus alpha times a constant. So this is a very simple fact, but it's a very important fact. We are going to use it at least twice in this talk. So let's start with the sample covariance. Sigma IGA actually is a very good estimator of unknown sigma, IG, uh, sigma IGA tilde. Is actually is a very good estimator of sigma IGA. First, it's unbiased. Second, the standard deviation is one of the square then. So let's start from the sample covariance. And then, Consider a bounding estimator. Estimate sigma IGA by sigma IGA tilde from the sample covariance. If sigma IGA is close to the diagonal, if it's far away from the diagonal, then estimate by zero. So that is clearly inspired uh, by this uh, time series uh, assumption. And this is a beautiful analysis. Usually, it's, it could be challenging to control uh, the spectral norm. So they control the spectral norm by the matrix L1 norm, which is the maximum row sum for A symmetric, or column sum, because A is symmetric, like equivalent. So they do a... Uh, decomposition of the risk by triangle inequality. This is the values, this is the bias square. For the bias square, we have this upper bound due to this simple fact. And some covariance is n bias estimator. And for the variance part, if your row has an order of k, nine zero inches. Uh, do you have questions? And I, I should answer question. Oh, okay. Uh, so, uh, I, I do not see any question there. Uh. For every entry, it's a model of square root log p of n times maybe a big constant. So the matrix L1 norm will be bounded above by k times square root log p of n. If you're squared, then you get k squared times log p of n. A trade-off of these two terms by setting k equal to this. Then we get a fascinating rate. As long as log p is equal to later O n, it's consistent under the matrix L1 norm and consequently under the spectrum norm. We follow this work very closely, but what we did was very minor. We try to deal with spectral norm directly. Actually, what we did was to consider the variance part under spectral norm directly. For the bias part, we use the same upper bound. This is a bounding matrix. You can think of it as a lot of k by k matrix stacking stacking together. For one k by k matrix, we expect a spectral upper bound squared of k of n. If you're squared, then you get k of n. But there are a lot of p of those matrices. And, and the tail bound, people had already proved, the tail, the tail probability is sub Gaussian. And then we have another bound log p of n as well. A trade-off between the first term and the third term and it gives a rate of estimation under the spectral norm. 
we also show that, and Q of n is also for the right choice of K is also uh, a lower bound, and log P of n lower bound can be established by the Combs method, and K of n lower bound can be established by a Schwarz lemma. So in summary, a brief summary, and what we did was very minor, and what we showed was just that, and uh, the bending procedure, or a variant of bending procedure, and proposed by Peter and Lisa was optimal. And if we choose the K uh, properly. In the same year, they had another paper in the Arnold's of Statistics. Consider sports a covariance matrix estimation. I believe that was the last issue of the Arnold's of that year, 2008. And one of the primary spaces they consider is, is every row and every column is sports. There will be no more than S and nine zero entries for each row and column. Then they consider a hard thresholding. And possibly with a relatively large C over there. And if C is large enough, and from uh, the classical uh, result of uh, uh, Dan Hart and Johnson and hard stretch holding, we know that and every row and every column of sigma hat minus sigma is still an S sparse with high probability. Then the matrix L random can be well controlled. It's just as times the maximum value of each entry, which can be well controlled by square root log P of n times the constant. So then we get a number bound to estimate a uh, sigma under the spectral norm uh, for the sparse covariance matrix estimation. We have already seen that matrix L one norm could be very bad bound to bound the spectral norm. So then the question is, is this rate optimal? So and uh, we try to prove the rate to be optimal by using the Schwarz lemma. We failed. Then we try to prove it by the Compton method. We failed again. And eventually we came up with a new lower bound. It's a combination of Schwarz lemma and the Compton method. <laughs> and uh, to, uh, to prove and uh, their procedure is optimal and for us that is small. And uh, uh, S is smaller than square, uh, uh, smaller than square, square root of n. So the Compton method, you know, is, is a very good way to get a lower bound for a sparse vector estimation. That could be for every row. And Ashwa's lemma, is a very good way to combine all rows together, then to get a matrix low bound. That's how we succeeded. And we have some other follow-ups as well. And uh, the first one is a very natural one, is the universe current matrix estimation. It has a Gaussian graph model interpretation. And since we have a Gaussian graph model interpretation, then we care about, and for each edge, you know, can we do inference? That means, you know, and we were considering a synthetic efficient estimation of each edge under a somewhat necessary and sufficient condition. And we also considered a matrix functional estimation, a computational bias, and a, a posterior contraction, a bond Stanford means theory. Of course, all, you know, following uh, uh, the pioneering paper of uh, Peter and, uh, and Lisa. So that's uh, the first part uh, of, uh, of, my uh, of my talk. And uh, the second part is on network analysis. Uh, in, in 2006, uh, about 17, uh, 16 years ago, and Chen Qin organized uh, a conference at Princeton. And to celebrate on Peter's uh, 65th uh, birthday, 
but I can, but I guess Peter was actually 66. Uh, I could be wrong. Uh, and so, and Peter, uh, uh, and, uh, there, uh, there was a uh, pre-reception uh, before the conference started. And Peter was there, uh, uh, sitting at a corner, and some of uh, new faculty were sitting or standing around him, uh, just to hear whatever he would say. Uh, I, I remember and Peter was talking about network analysis and, and also and suggested it, it's important to have more statistics to be involved in network analysis. And to be honest, I did not really know what Peter was really talking about uh, until um, six years later. Uh, and uh, Peter was giving a talk at Yale and in a uh, workshop and uh, Tony and I organized. And Peter was talking about uh, network models. And he started with this important paper, uh, a groundbreaking paper. And to unify, uh, to provide a unifying view and to get uh, uh, several communities together, including uh, social sciences, statistics, probability, and physics. And through an non-privileged estimation and graph, and by uh, Aldous Hoover uh, result. Uh, in that paper, they also proved another fascinating result. They show that a newman govin uh, modularity, uh, a newman govin modularity, and could be a good way to do community detection. And when sigma is strong, and everyone has at least logan friends, and then you could identify the community, uh, everyone's community information with high probability. And the chance to be wrong is exponentially small. In the end of that paper, and people pointed out and, uh, several important directions and to work on. Uh, this, uh, the first one is when the signal is not strong and we may have less than Morgan friends, and people expected MLE and the Bayesian approach and it should be optimal. And this is another direction. Uh, to think about more about uh, graphon and non parametric estimation. And we, when we have infinite uh, community, and then that means we need to do some kind of bias and variance trade off. And the last one over here is spectral clustering. And it's possible MLE and Bayesian approach may not be completely tractable. And spectral clustering could be a very good alternative. So I'll illustrate on Peter's ideas and by a very simple model and a stochastic block model with two communities. We have Zolf and adjacent matrix. So there are n nodes and there are some edges. And AIJ is equal to one, let him, uh, uh, then there's an edge. Peter, I see this is how the model is generated. <coughs> M people in two communities. And the community assignment, ID Bernoulli Pi. If I and J are in the same community, then AIJ is generated from Bernoulli PIJ, and the PIJ could be, will be equal to A. If they are in a different community, then PIJ is equal to B. And they are independent Bernoulli. So it's a very simple model. And you can make the model slightly more complicated, uh, uh, more complicated. And to have, instead of two parameters, you may have three parameters, or you may have, instead of two communities, you may have K communities. And, but the story will not change. So then Peter consider a private estimation. I believe, and Peter call uh, pi A and B a uh, global parameters, and call a uh, community detection and uh, local parameters. And also, an important part is graph estimation. And in this talk, I do not distinguish graph estimation with estimation of the mean of the adjacent matrix. I, I'm sorry uh, for that. I, I do that just to make my life easier. So in this beautiful paper, 
and they study a uh, global uh, planetary estimation um, by method of moments. Uh, it was dedicated to Eric Lemon and Peter's uh, advisor, of course, and IU and Lisa's uh, grand advisors. They consider very general models, uh, including the Kaiser model with K communities. And uh, I'll be strict on their consideration to our toy model. And that means K is equal to two. And there are three primers to estimate. So what well, this is their proposal. They said, okay, we use method moments. We have three parameters, pi, let's say the proportion of the community one. We have A, let's say connection probability in community one, and uh, B, and uh, uh, connection probability between community one and community two. So we need three equations. Then the first equation, they use, they count the number of edges in the network. Then the second equation, then they count number of two connected edges in the network. And then the third equation, they count a, a number of three connected edges with some constraints. Mm -hmm. So then we have three equations and I solve these three equations, then they get rid of any consistency. Uh, so that means they could estimate A, B, and pi with one of n rate and under the square error loss. And they, uh, there is under an assumption over here. And okay, uh, this assumption is just an assumption to make sure that Jacobi and for those equations will not be degenerate. Mm. Oh, by the way, uh, I, I, uh, I'm assuming B is at an order of one. If it's not an order of one, there will be just a scaling factor A squared over here. As long as A is not too small, everything will be fine. So that's, uh, that's uh, uh, the method of moments paper. And we and we've, uh, revisited the paper uh, by considering a graph estimation. Uh, again, you know, the graph estimation is just estimating, uh, is just estimation of the mean of the adjacency uh, matrix. So, okay, the dominating, uh, we use a, a least square approach. Uh, and then uh, to get the upper bound, that means we need to get the complexity. And uh, the dominating uh, 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 factor, uh, uh, in the uh, complexity is the number of potential uh, uh, community assignments, and which is an order of two to the power n. And if you take a, uh, a log of that quantity, then we get n. That's why we get such a number bound, one of n. And if we uh, look at this matrix and count and how many a, a hat minus a in that matrix, that would be an order of n squared. So that result immediately implies we could estimate uh, uh, after an order on one of n uh, is reproducing and this work, uh, this, this result, but without this assumption. So, uh, and, uh, by the way, and, uh, you can easily extend uh, this uh, result to uh, 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 sort of talk about it with K communities and also to uh, 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 graph on estimation. And so since, you know, uh, we seem to be slightly, doing uh, slightly better uh, than this result and without, uh, you know, and, uh, better in this sense without this assumption. So, and then and we uh, revisited the problem again. And that means, okay, under that assumption, can we do better? That was uh, Peter's question. It turns out we could do better. And the rate over here is one of n squared. So it's, it's as good as you know the label information of everyone. So that sounds uh, too good to be true. The reason is this, right? You know, you look at the pi, okay, how about your estimate pi? Your estimate pi from the, uh, you know, basically a binomial observation. You can never get a rate like one of n squared to estimate pi. That means it's hard for you to get a better rate, you know, one of n squared. And we avoided that. Uh, by not estimating pi, we try to estimate the exact proportion of community one in the network. That's the realization of of uh, of uh, of the uh, uh, of the community. Uh, so 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 uh, 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 yeah, that, that was a fun work, uh, but it was not published. Uh, 
uh, and when, I mean, we did not publish, and uh, because uh, we couldn't get the consent right. Uh, at one time, uh, I believe I, I thought I, you know, uh, we had a proof and uh, to get the consent right. Uh, and then uh, Peter was looking at the proof and they say, hey, Harry, how do you go from this step to that step? So the proof was wrong. <laughs> that was amazing. Oh. Uh, another direction and putting out uh, 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 in uh, uh, Peter's uh, groundbreaking paper uh, is community detection. Mm. So, and he expected uh, maximum likelihood estimation uh, should uh, be optimal. And uh, even when the signal noise ratio, uh, when the signal noise ratio is not very strong. Uh, that means if people may have less than Logan friends. Uh, so that, uh, and in this paper, what we did was just to reconfirm what people exactly uh, expected and years ago. And the exponent over here, and could be found for this year. Uh, the exponent over here is Rene divergence of order one half. And Rene uh, was born uh, 100 years ago. And this year there's a conference in honor of him. Uh, uh, it's called Rene 100. Uh, So we have some other uh, follow-ups as well. And uh, you know, we obtained the other bound uh, by using MLE, and, uh, but MLE is not completely tractable. And so uh, we follow another idea of Peter to use spectral clustering uh, to get an, a warm uh, initialization. And uh, then we do a one-step uh, local refinement uh, to obtain optimality, uh, to obtain the operand rate. Uh, so and one step refinement idea is not new to Peter. And Peter proposed that uh, 47 years ago uh, in his uh, celebrated paper of uh, 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 in uh, one uh, in uh, uh, in Jasa, I believe it's called a uh, one step uh, Huber estimate. Uh, so that uh, uh, that was the second topic. Hey, Chen Qing, how many minutes do I have? Uh, you have about, uh, let's say, I think nine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ten, let's say ten to be <laughs> So uh, uh, this is the third topic, and uh, it's on uh, variation inference. And uh, in 2016, uh, and uh, Lisa organized a conference at Michigan, and Peter, uh, was the preliminary speaker. And he was talking about an Bayesian inference and for a community detection. And for, uh, if for Bayesian inference, and the most important thing is to calculate posterior uh, for both Bayesian and frequentist. Uh, and uh, so, and uh, for the posterior, you know, it may not be completely tractable. So Peter proposed to use mean field approach. What does that mean? That means the posterior could be a uh, super, com super complicated and uh, 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 distribution. And then they, uh, they approximate uh, that distribution by product magic. And Peter started with this paper uh, in the talk uh, with uh, David Choi, uh, Xiang Yu Chang, and uh, Hai Zhang. And they show that and variation base of works, at least under a strong uh, signal noise uh, ratio condition. Uh, when the signal is very strong, uh, they show that, and to make inference using the original uh, likelihood without knowing uh, anything about the uh, uh, community information, and and uh, to uh, to do inference for global parameters, and uh, and you can do as well as you near the labels. So actually, what they proved was more than a variation of inference works. So I. And I was highly skeptical, and uh, and I, I I was in the talk, and uh, and uh, I remember, and when I was in the talk, I sent an email to my co-authors, and I said, okay, and this is kind of crazy idea, and uh, can you guys show and uh, variational uh, inference would fail, because the posterior, you know, naturally posterior could be super complicated, and how could you know product magic would be a good approximation? 
So this is exactly what I asked my co-authors to do. And again, let's think about the toy model. Okay, this is likelihood. My PIJ is either equal to A, equal to B. Oh, let's assume they are known. So we have a prior and uh, for the label information, and then we calculate the posterior. And, and which is not computationally tractable and because, uh, 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 because uh, we have a uh, uh, total power and uh, realization for Z there. So, okay, we approximate uh, the posterior, which is, uh, uh, you know, this, which is the joint distribution of N uh, Bernoulli, but they could be highly dependent. And then approximate it uh, by a product module, let's mean field approach. Uh, and this is another way to write it down. Uh, and it turns out uh, uh, for this simple model, and uh, uh, this objective function uh, has an explicit form. So what I asked my cohort to do was this, and to show that and uh, uh, this outcome is bad. And uh, when the signal loss ratio is not strong. Uh, so when signal is strong, of course, Peter proved that it works, all right? Uh, actually he proved more than that. Uh, and since, you know, this objective function is not a complex in Pi, so what we did was to use a batch coordinate as an variation inference in an iterative algorithm and uh, uh, to approximate uh, 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 the maximum. And uh, actually it's just an EM algorithm. And to our surprise, and what we showed was this, if the initializer is strictly better than the running guess, if you guess everyone's one's committee uh, information by flipping coin, then we get an error one half. So if it's strictly better than running guess, and then after a number of log n steps, and uh, uh, mean field approach works, it's very right optimal, as long as you could get a consistent estimation of the communities. So I tried to uh, find against Peter, but I failed. Uh. And we have some other follow-ups as well. And uh, for example, uh, a global convergence of EM uh, uh, with my colleague and uh, 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 with random decision. And uh, we considered uh, two component Gaussian mixtures. And, but the idea over there cannot be extended to general Gaussian mixture. And now we are overcoming that by over precision and optimal transport uh, theory. And, uh, I, and uh, at this moment, my uh, 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 research focus uh, is, to, is to understand and statistical and computational guarantee of some uh, non-convex optimization problems. So, okay, a brief summary. Uh, in the past 10 or 15 years, uh, Peter has been my lighthouse. house and will continue to be, of course. Uh, thank you, Peter, and happy birthday. Uh, thank you, Harry, for uh, the wonderful uh, presentation. Uh, indeed, Peter's, uh, I mean, uh, academic, uh, I mean, powerhouse has guided many of us here. So let me see if there are any, many of people working uh, in similar areas. Uh, I didn't see anybody online. Let me see if there are any questions. So while people are thinking, so uh, so let me ask you a very simple question. Uh, so you have done wonderful work, right? So uh, and in many real world, either night network or coherence matrix uh, for financial investment or for understanding the relationship. Uh, so they are always dynamic aspect. Uh, do you thinking how to do uh, dynamic modeling on how? Uh, current spot, current matrix evolve or how network evolve? Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I did not do that. And I know, uh, uh, you know, some of uh, uh, Peter's students um, uh, uh, have done a wonderful work and along that line and, uh, and for both, uh, uh, you know, for the network and the graph models. Yeah, uh, sorry, I, I did not do any work along that line. And it's, of course, it's fascinating. Uh, and by the way, you know, and of course you have, and. Uh, uh, you you also did a lot of work uh, uh, you know uh, around the same time with Peter, 
and uh, on, uh, on large covariance matrices and uh, low level structures. Uh, Thank you, Harry. Uh, any questions from the audience? Okay, so uh, so Harry, since everybody quiet, let me ask you a second question, right? <laughs> so uh, I mean, you got very nice uh, mini max rates, which certainly depending on the uh, the norm you use and the space you use, right? So uh, if I want to do, let's say, some kind of hypothesis testing, uh, and I would like to understand the uh, the uncertainty quantification of, uh, let's say, coherence matrix estimation, sparse coherence matrix estimation under certain norms. Uh, do you have any thoughts or literature on that? Um. Right, yeah, you probably didn't hear me well. Right? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I, of, I, in what I did along that line it was very minor. And uh, uh, I did, you know, some uh, matrix functionals uh, uh, to get a point stand for me type of result. And uh, also, you know, did some kind of similar normality for graphic model stuff. And, but there could be a lot more to do, right? You know, and uh, 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 yeah, along the line, uh, I of course, and a lot of results I have done, and uh, are quite limited. I I know uh, uh, Vladimir Kosinski has done a lot of uh, uh, interesting work along the line as well. Uh, uh, thank you, Harry. Oh, okay, yeah. Now there are two questions. So, yeah. Okay. Now I have another question. So assume that you talked about this network analysis. Assume I didn't give you a sample of the network. But let's say I observed an epidemic on the network. It has two communities. Have you thought about how to estimate the network if I just give you how the epidemic spreads? Assume you know all the parameters of the epidemics and you want to say, oh, these are the two communities. Oh, I'm sorry, I cannot really hear. Uh, uh, can you do you know the question? OK, can you hear me now? Oh, yeah. Okay. Hi, Harry, this question. I oh, have a question. Okay. If you had, assume sometimes we don't really see the network, but let's say we see an epidemic spreading on a network and assume you knew it has two communities. And I ask you to find the communities or estimate how strong the connection between the community is. If you see the epidemic spread and let's say, you know, all the parameters of the epidemic. So in general, this idea that maybe I can't really observe the network, but I can see something happening on the network. You see, this is a sampling problem, right? And uh, the sampling could be very biased. Oh. I'm, I'm sorry, I did not think along that direction. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah that's, that's another very interesting direction to think about. Uh. Right. Um, let me ask a question. This is Lisa Harry. Um, very nice talk. Um, so, you know, when we were doing all that um, log P over N stuff, we called it the large P small N, you know, you and us and, and everyone, uh, maybe 15 years ago. Um, but now going to the theme of the conference, I think large P small N is not so much the case now, it's large P large N, and, and everything's very large. So <laughs> how much of those rates and those results, do you think translates to this new big data context where everything's very big? Uh, I guess, uh, you know, yes, we may have big, uh, large N, large P these days. And, uh, but we know that, you know, the model we have been thinking about tend to be uh, very simplified. And um, the data could be very, uh, you know, uh, heterogeneous and, uh, and um, we may have a lot of big N, but it's not necessarily we have big N there, uh, 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 you know, uh, because the data is not homogeneous. So, so, uh, so I think uh, 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 large, uh, large piece more N uh, is still important. Uh. Uh, 
Uh, so, Harry, uh, in the interest of time, uh, thank you very much for wonderful, I mean, talk that touched many as well. People's life. <laughs> okay, so the uh, the next speaker uh, is uh, Jess uh, Skelholm, uh, Eugene Mayer Professor uh, of Statistics and uh, Political Science.